Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Last time I was before you, I was a little dry, so I brought a rag this time. <laughs> they got my water early. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we've been saying how great God is, and it's funny because of the message that I have tonight. Just, just coincides or goes with what we're talking about. How great He is. Um, he's a great God. Yes, He is. And in scripture, they refer to him as a great father. You know, he watches over his people, you know, his children, even when we don't want to do right, even when we find it hard to listen to our father. So before I go in, we're just going to get a word of prayer real quick. Lord, we thank you for this moment and this hour. Say something, say something unto your people, Lord. Use me as an instrument to be able to wield your power. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you see each individual where they are, that lives will be changed, that no one will remain the same after tonight, Lord. We continue to want to serve, love, and worship you in the beauty of holiness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, before I go into my scripture, y'all have to forgive me for a minute because I'm used to a digital Bible. And so if you see me fumbling, that means that... <laughs> I'm not used to this Bible, I had to borrow it right before I got up here, but that's all right. So, uh, fathers, how many fathers we got here? Anybody besides Pastor Matt? We've got a bunch of fathers in here. I'm a father myself. So, when you think about fathers, you know, you think about your father, you would hope that you can say something good about your father. My father was the greatest. My father was awesome. He was the best. You know, ain't nobody like my dad. Women can say that, sisters can say that too. My dad, ain't nobody like my, I want to marry somebody like my dad, right? So, when I think about that, and when we think about that, our fathers, no one really claims the bad one, so to speak. Nobody really, you know, wants to say, you know, that father that didn't take care of me, that father that didn't look after me, you know, nowadays, if you grew up in urban society, they gave him the name of deadbeat. Hmm. You're a deadbeat. You ain't, you ain't never bring no money by here. You ain't did this. You ain't. You don't take your child nowhere. They want to go to McDonald's, you don't take them. That's just one example. So, could you see yourself taking after a deadbeat dad? Could you see yourself reflecting or claiming a deadbeat dad? Could you? Some people say, no. Mm -mm. I can't. That man ain't did nothing for me in 52 years. I'm not that old, but I'm just saying. <laughs> you got some people like myself who didn't meet their father until 24, 24 years old. So it was like, what have you done for me lately? I was happy to see him, but he didn't take care of me. I was born out of adultery, and I'm not ashamed to say but. It brings a reflection on what has gone on in, er, in our society, not even urban society, but our society. So, will I claim that? Do I say, you know what? My daddy is awesome. He's great. Oh, I don't talk bad about him, but do I, do I, should I reflect him? Should that be my reflection? Should that be what I want to take after? Now, we're, about to, we're about to go further. I just, I just want you to think about that for a minute. The word of the Lord, if you turn with me in John, chapter 8, verse 32. We'll start at 31, excuse me, 31. And we're going to go to 47. I'll take that back. We're going to go from 31 to 38. We're going to go from 31 to 38. The word of the Lord reads this. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. 
I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. Uh, verse 38, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. The, the, the backdrop to this scripture in the beginning of the chapter starts out with Jesus and the adulterous woman. And, you know, as it comes down, we have the Pharisees who commonly tested Jesus all the time. And if we know history about Pharisees, they were from God's chosen people. So automatically, because they felt like they were born into, you know, the, the God's people that, you know, they automatically received or they were automatically in the right. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus was speaking to them here. And as we go down to some further scriptures, he talks about who his father is and who their father is. Hmm. So on today for a moment, the thought tonight is, are you a reflection of a loving father or taking after a deadbeat dad? Hmm. So you might say, well, brother, who are you talking about? Just like these Jews did, these Pharisees, excuse me. Who do you keep referring to? They said, you know, we're, you know, we're of Abraham's seed. We, 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 come on, you know, we're of Abraham's seed. There's no reason why we should, what do you mean, we, we not, our father shouldn't be different. Well, the complexity here was, God was saying, I mean, excuse me, Jesus was saying that, I know my father. My father bears witness of me. Yeah, yeah. Who he was talking about was their father, because of their heart. And because of their heart, the devil was their father. Come on now. The father of this world. Mm-hmm. As we move on and we, and we look at some things, what kind of things identify us with our Father? What kind of things in the natural that we can look at identify us with our Father that show the characteristics and, you know, the DNA, the genes, what we look like and the relationship? So, so let's, let's step into one. For, let's talk about the spiritual DNA. The, the, the thing that... that, that you know, in the natural, when you see someone that looks like someone, you say, girl, you look just like your dad. Yeah. Why? Because I have genes. I have, I have things that, 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 attribute, that sticks out. Come on, come on. My physical attributes. If anybody yeah. has been on Facebook with me, if you see a picture of my mother, I, am ex I look exactly like her. Exactly like her. Now, if you take that and put my father in place, I grew up with my mother. You, you see, most people that grow up with their parents, they look like that parent or they favor that parent. All right, my kids, unfortunately, they look just like me whether I'm around or not. That's how strong my genes are. So my DNA, Come on now. my spiritual DNA, the spiritual DNA that I have, right, or that we're supposed to have, my spiritual DNA is supposed to match the Lord Jesus Christ. Not 99.9%. But a hundred percent, a hundred percent. That means there should be nothing in me once I change my life and, and once he renews me, when I am born of God, I shouldn't take on anything less than what he has given me. Nothing less. If we go to Romans 8, chapter 8, starting at verse 5. Oh, I take that back. We're going to go to 1 John, excuse me, chapter 3. Verses 9 and 10. It reads on this wise. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin. Because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he, neither he that loveth not his brother. So... That tells me that if, I, if I'm not born, if I'm not remade, if I'm not changed, recreated, taken on God's spirit, that means that he can't even identify with me. He doesn't know me. Anybody seen the more of the show? You see where he tells about 20 fathers? You know, I, I thought about it. As I was looking through this message, I was like, my God. At, in judgment, it's going to be just like the Maury Poker show. <laughs> and you say, what do you mean? <laughs> you are not your father. When God tests you, and he finds out that you're not his, 
she gonna say, depart from me, I never knew you. He gonna take his, my God, he gonna take his spiritual DNA test and he gonna test and see if he gonna match up. Is it going to be 100%? Because if you're 99.9%, you're still not his. Without spot or blemish. Mm. So that means nothing can't be off. Come on now. Nothing. That, 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 that takes on such a personal look. The DNA, the makeup, what you are made of, what, you, what your father has put inside of you when you receive the power of the Holy Ghost, when you decided to turn your ways around. Moving on to, to, to the characteristics. You know what, oh, you know, Adrian, you know what, Adrian, you act just like your father. Oh. I know people have said it to Pastor Mel, but you know, Adrian, she does things just yeah. like you. Yeah, yeah. So when I do things like my father, and for this I went to Galatians, and I looked at Galatians chapter 5. And, and when I looked at works and characteristics and the things that, that, that come about when you have the spirit of God or you're working in the flesh of the, of the devil, your, your nature, first I started with the, the, the works of the flesh. And we know the works of the flesh are adultery, fornication.